How y'all doing out there? This is Richard Spiderbot, and here to introduce our video, So You Wanna Make Beats. Now let me ask you something. What actually got you inspired to wanna make beats in the first place? It could have been a DJ's performance where he actually slapped the record on the one and twos and made you throw your hands up a little bit, and you said to yourself, I wanna make a record just like that. You could have even been digging through the crates one day and stumbled across an old 70s funk groove and thought to yourself, you know, if I knew how to make a song, build it up, and then put that in the hook, that would be a hit right there. You might even saw somebody on a uh, music video rocking a certain piece of gear and thought to yourself, that's something that I want to do. Well, whatever the answer to that question is, the most difficult thing that I had to think about in making this video was music is as unique as the individuals that created. Think about that. You got one guy that wants to make techno, another one house, another one R&B, another one drum and bass. And say out of two guys that want to make an R&B groove, they're flipping a remix, the results will be as different as night and day. So what I'll do in this video is I'll go through as many musical styles as I can to show you how I put them together. Now, I actually believe that one of the best ways to learn how to do just about anything is through repetition, watching somebody doing it over and over and over, and then apply what you've seen to your own experience in trying to recreate or mimic something that they did and then develop your own style. A good example is somebody learning how to scratch using turntables. A lot of people just watch the videos over and over and then mimic the movement and then incorporate that into their own style. And as a matter of fact, you probably would have never thought to even scratch a record if you hadn't observed somebody doing it first and then said to yourself, that's something that I want to do. The main piece of equipment that I'll be using in this video is an Akai MPC 2000 XL. And the reason that I chose that particular piece of gear, it's probably one of the most popular machines of all time for producing any type of urban contemporary styles. The great thing about the MPC 2000 XL is its versatility. It's a sampler, a sequencer, a drum machine, and it incorporates some of the most powerful song building uh, features that are in use today. R&B, hip hop, techno, house, things like that. They all rely on sampling technology. But the MPC 2000 XL will not be the only piece of gear that we use in this video. As a matter of fact, we're gonna pull out some keyboards, some digital multi-tracks, and some samplers that you can pick up for as low as 350 bucks for music production. One of the synth modules that you see here behind me, some software, effects processors, you name it. And we'll go through as many of those as we can to get you started into understanding some of the tools that producers use. We'll also get some great tips from industry insiders in interviews about making beats. And to top it all off, a five-step method for creating your own musical compositions. So let's get right into it with some things that you need to know about making beats. Now, as we get started into the world of making beats, we have gotta learn some of the lingo that music producers use every day. Whenever you have a group of sounds put together to form the raw essentials of a beat, this is called a kit. You'll see me now push play and record on the drum machine sequencer. Immediately, you'll hear clicks in a rhythmic pattern coming from the internal metronome. These are known as beats. I'll go ahead and tap the drum machine's pads to those beats and program my own rhythmic pattern. This is the process known as sequencing, and it's the way that songs are built using electronic music gear. Now you'll see me start to count with my fingers. Each finger raised, as you see it counted, is a musical measurement of rhythm called a bar or measure. This pattern loops after every four bars, and it's also measured by what is called a time signature. Now, chances are that 4-4 four, four, or 4 beats per measure is probably the only one you'll ever use in urban music production. Now you'll see me start to change the speed of the pattern. This is known as the tempo or BPM, also known as beats per minute. The tempo is the measurement by which a song's speed is clocked. We'll talk more about this in the next segment. By the way, when I program a loop from scratch using these individual drum hits, this is known as a pattern. Now I want to see if you're paying attention. With what you know about bars, how many bars do you hear in this pattern? If you guessed two bars, you're absolutely right. And here's how we counted those.
Now, if your timing is not very good, a sequencer can fix it by means of a process called quantize. Watch what happens when I intentionally just mess up and mangle this beat. What quantize does is move misfired notes to the closest available notes. So, in this case, it was 16th notes. All you gotta do is just mess with the ratio and find what works best for you. But for most urban music, a 16th note quantize ratio will work best. Now we'll do it again, but this time we'll set the quantize ratio to 8th notes. So even if your timing is not that good, a sequencer will help you pull it together by means of quantization. Now let's do a few patterns of different musical styles and discuss the overall BPMs that distinguish their types. For instance, House usually rides between 128 and 136 BPM. We'll do a pattern at 135. First I'll do the hi-hats for 8 bars. Now I'll add a funky loop. Next I'll add the kick and snare. Over that, I'll lay down some funky vocoder samples. Now I'll add a bass loop. Now I'll change the quantize ratio to 16th note triplets to make the hi-hat swing a little harder. With house music, it's really good to know what system exclusive or control change info you can change and record into the sequencer. For instance, the MPC 2000 XL lets me record filter, pitch, and envelope parameters to the sequencer. Check it out. Filter moves were recorded as I changed them. Drum and bass styles race along at about 160 to 180 BPM. The pattern we'll do now clocks in at 164. We'll start with the grungy synth loop. Then we'll drop in the break beats and a vocal stat. Hip-hop and R&B have the most diverse range of tempos, anywhere from 60 to 101 beats per minute. Now, instead of sequencing this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and perform this hip-hop groove live via sampled phrases that lock together at 95 BPM on a Zoom sample track. Have we seen the actual reality of a monstrous crime or merely an illusion, the product of a tortured brain?
Now, a lot of you are probably asking yourself, where am I getting most of the sounds that I'm using in my samplers? Vinyl's a great place to get stuff, but you're going to run into a lot of copyright infringement issues. I do create a lot of stuff from scratch, but I also use a lot of sample CDs. With sample CDs, you can find a vast array of samples covering everything from drum loops to orchestras to just about every exotic type of musical instrument on the face of the planet Earth. Most usually running about 99 bucks and free of the copyright clearance blues. Let's make a beat using sounds from around the globe, starting with Travelog Africa by Big Fish Audio. Listen to this. I've got my CD player hooked up to my sampler and ready to go. And when I find something I like, I just sample it. Yeah, I like that loop right there. Next up, let's see what we can find on New World Order by East West and Sounds Good. I'm looking for some kind of crazy stringed instruments that I can add to this. Yeah, I like that too. Now I need a breakbeat, and the king of all breakbeat CDs, Vinylistics One, should do the trick. Let's take a listen. This CD even breaks down the breakbeats right down to the kicks and snare. And for the final spice over the top, I'll get some percussion and bass sounds from Megaton Bomb Number 2, which is part of a two CD set by Big Fish Audio. Cool. That'll work. So here's all the stuff I sampled and put into the MPC 2000 Excel. I went ahead and assigned them and then sequenced a beat with them. Listen to this. With sample CDs, you can combine elements together that you never thought would work together. Sounds like some crazy old James Bond movie beat. Now we're going to talk about two of the most popular software products for music production. First up is Acid by Sonic Foundry. This allows you the ability to actually record your own loops or even use license-free loops to make your own music. And I'd be pretty happy to say that when it comes to building music with loops, Acid is the best. Simply use the pencil tool to drag out how long you want a loop to play. Now here's a drum loop. Now let's add a bass line. And the drum loop and the guitar loops came from a loop CD, but the bass line and the piano line were sampled and imported into Acid from a sound module. Now you're noticing that the sound drops out when placing a loop, but it doesn't do that in playback. As a matter of fact, the sound quality is excellent. Now let's add that piano loop I created. You know, I probably should add that this program is only available on the PC. No Macintosh version is yet available. Now let's go ahead and add a funky guitar loop. Now that we've added all this stuff, I think I want to pick a different drum loop that complements the bass line and the piano loops that I created a little bit better. All I got to do is select a new loop, draw it in, and then mute the other one. Check it out.
Now you can download a free version of Acid Express at www.sonicboundary.com and try it out before you buy the full version. If software loop production is the way you want to make your music, you're going to love Acid. Now check this out. Imagine owning $100,000 or more of drum machines, synth samplers, sequencers, you name it, for only $3.99. It is now reality with reason, which is every bit as powerful as it is educational. Once you've mastered it, you'll really know your way around the complete music production studio, right down to the wiring. Here I'm using the Matrix sequencer to build the bass line from the subtractor synthesizer. All the controls work like the real thing, like this spring-loaded pitch bender. Very cool. Now I'm tweaking the bass sound into a percussive rhythm sound using the Subtractor's ADSR envelopes. Check it out. Now let's add some drum patterns from the Redrum drum machine. Let's change the clap sound. And now let's change its pitch. This program has the same vintage style, fully programmable sequencers as the classic analog gear of the past, as well as some new and powerful features that'll have you making just about any cutting edge styles of music that you want to dream up. Check this out, if you want to rewire your virtual studio, say to split up like the kicks and snares and percussion on the different tracks of a virtual mixer, push the tab key and simply drag and drop the virtual cables to the new inputs you want to route them to. Nice. Ah, effects processors. You can run as many effects processors as you want depending on your computer's processor speed. It's clocking along really nice on my Mac G4, and it's available for Mac and PC. So the more processor speed, the more modules, effects, samplers, and drum machines you could use all at one time. You can download a free demo version at www.propellerheads.se. No two bones about it, you'll be hooked. Maybe the way you want to produce your music is using a keyboard workstation. They definitely add another dimension and flexibility to music production. Here's 10 features you should look for in choosing a keyboard workstation. Does it have a sequencer to handle your groove making needs? Does it have a sampler to aid you in cutting edge sound design? Does it have a built-in effects processor with effects like reverb, chorus, and delay? Does it offer expandability via internally mounted synth cards or other ROM upgrades? Is it velocity sensitive? In other words, does pounding on the keys harder or softer communicate dynamics such as volume or filter changes? Does it have MIDI and what kind of audio ins and outs does it have? Does it offer storage peripheral options such as SCSI to help you save large sample files faster via external hard drives? Does it have an arpeggiator to help you sculpt killer synth lines? And how's the price? Some keyboards on the market go for five, even 20,000 bucks. And number 10, does it sound great? So great that everybody wants to try it out for themselves? Well, the Korg Triton Sampling Workstation has all of these features and more, and is one of the most popular keyboard workstations ever produced. Just check out how easy it is to build beats on this thing. Let's start with the drums. Now let's add a bass line. Now how about an arpeggiated synth track?
Now let's add some crazy old bells on the top. And get this, this is just part of the huge sound library that's built into the Korg Triton in addition to its sampling capabilities. This is the weapon of choice for producers like Babyface, Dallas Austin, and Rodney Jurgens. Very powerful. Now you see me use quite a bit of the MPC 2000 XL sampling drum machine, which will set you back around 1400 for the base model, around 2300 for the studio version. But if you're just starting out, the most affordable sampling drum machine on the market is the Zoom Sample Track, which runs around 350 bucks. I'll start sequencing an eight bar pattern, starting with the hi-hat. The metronome sound on this thing is nice and loud. Next, I'll add the kick and snare. Now I'm going to add a cool 8-bar orchestra sample. Check this out. Nice. And here's the bass line. sound, all I did was sample one bass note and copy it to each of these pads, altering each one's pitch. Now let's play it back without the metronome sound. This one's got kind of a tango feel. In addition to its powerful sequencing and sampling capability, the sample track boasts an onboard effects processor with some really cool effects, some of which I'll show here. Time compression lets me speed up and slow down the sample without changing its pitch. Use delay to create echo effects. Use reverb to increase the size of a virtual room. Use the phaser for some hypnotic robotic effects. People who program house music will love the high-pass filters. Here's one of my favorite effects, lo-fi, where you can make a clean sample sound like a crackly old record. You can use the edit wheel to add even more hiss and pops. You know, another thing that I love about this little box, besides it being really cheap, is it's on the fly phrase looping. All of the loops match perfectly after using the sample track's auto sync feature. Now here's a unique effects processor in a class all its own, the Alesis Air Effects. You can hook this bad boy up to anything with audio outputs. It uses a unique interface activated by a 3D infrared sphere to completely mangle and contort sound. You can actually engage different levels of the effects by simply waving your hands or anything right over it. So as you can see, effects processors have many uses, such as adding depth and dimension to a sound, or even disguising its original origin. So even if the gear that you're currently using doesn't have an effects processor, you can always add one later, like the Air Effects.
Now let's hear some sound advice from industry insiders on making beats. The only advice I could give him is just get some money from your parents, buy an MPC or any, any of your favorite drum machines and start making beats, you know. And as soon as you could get into the clubs, get into the clubs. Like if you're in LA, go to the Century Club, go to Roscoe's to eat. You meet a lot of people in the industry. Make a CD of your beats and just pass them out. You never know, you know what I'm saying? Anybody could just like your beats, whether it's raw, West Coast, East Coast, Universal. First thing, <clears throat> always cop copyright your material. Um, if you don't know about it, you can go down to a library and ask them about copyrights and basically give you an address. And whenever you do a beat or a few beats, put it on a cassette, fill out a form, and send it in. Then anytime you, f you uh, hear about any shows, uh, rap groups coming, performing, even if it's at a, a small club or arena, always take your tapes or beats on them, and you never know. You know what I mean? That could be your next hookup, or that could be your door into the whole game. And just make sure that your stuff is copyrighted so they won't steal it from you. Get gear and just start putting your nose in the grind. Spend hours and hours in there and just keep working at it. And you'll get it like the way you like it someday, you know? Whether it's six months or two years or four years or whatever, just keep working at it, you know? Just find a good lawyer or a good management team to represent you, to, to be able to walk your stuff in to a label instead of having you mail your stuff in and it's getting lost in the shelf. A couple of years later, you'll probably hear your beat on somebody else's song. You're like, oh, that's my beat. But two years later, you'll be like, yo, do you have any legal ground to stand on? Because you didn't have a lawyer. You didn't have your stuff copywritten. In this age, actually, the way that most people are running, making the track work is to uh, invest in a good computer and check out a lot of the sound programs they have. Things like WaveLab, SoundForge, Reason, and Logic. Those are all like audio programs that are that are really good because it's more in the computer age now where you can make the tracks right. that everyone's playing on a computer. Uh, I think in in, in the long term, uh, sampling will become less important than actually being able to make sounds from scratch. As time goes on, with more advanced software and more advanced computer equipment, you, you can make more and more complex sounds. So the, uh, you know, we're very close now to being able to create in real time from scratch uh, with, the, with the appropriate software, just about any sound that, that you can think of. Herbie, has sampling come a long way since the 8-bit days or what? Oh, absolutely. I mean, sampling is, uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the quality of sound is so much better than it ever used to be. Now we're going to have to deal with 96K hertz. You can send your, your tapes in to record labels, uh, send it in to a and rs attention a and r at whatever record label you want um, want to you know send it to just put it direct it attention a and r because that's the people that's going to listen to these tracks that's going to hook it up with their artists that they already have and they need, need music for and another thing is like i said listen out for the acts that are coming to your town in clubs and things like that you don't you know what i mean just Throw it to them if you have to. As long as they get it, they'll listen to it on a tour bus or on a plane. And make sure you have your information, your phone numbers, address, so if they do like what they hear and they're true to the game, they're going to call you. You know, I would say do a little research with the companies you're, you're trying to get your stuff to. You know, try to make a couple phone calls, drop your name, and, you know, try to see if you get somebody on the phone and, you know, tell them who you are and explain to them what you're going to send them. So at least they have an idea, and that starts a relationship, a rapport with you and the a &R person. What not to do is blindly solicit them, you know. That, that's what I would just really suggest. Solicited is you, like, knowing somebody at a label or knowing somebody who knows somebody at a label or getting personal contact with somebody at the label and explaining to them you, who you are, what you have, and saying you would like to send it to them, and that person saying, yeah. Okay, cool, send it to me. That's solicited material. Or having a manager or lawyer being able to walk it in. That's solicited material. Unsolicited material is just you blindly going in, in the phone book and getting every record company and just putting your thing in an envelope and sending it out to people. You know, and, and expecting somebody to call you back. <laughs> you know, that's, gonna, that's not going to ever happen in, in, this, in, this, in this music game. Now, for building full beat compositions, I use a five-step method called F-R-E-S-H. Yo, that's fresh. Now, let me break down what it stands for. F is for finding the right material. Sample CDs and vinyl are just a few places you can find cool stuff. Next, you want to record your fat sounds you've collected into your sampler. 
E is to evolve and assign the samples you've collected into kits. S is for sequencing and arranging the song, composing it with the kits and or sound modules and keyboards to create a finished arrangement. And the fifth and final step, H, stands for hard disk recording. All you have to do is add a vocalist for a remix or mix it straight to CD right from the digital multi-track to sell your beats. And now you get to watch this formula in action, starting with finding the root material. And once I found some sounds that I like that work together, I'm gonna sample them directly into the MPC. So after about 20 minutes, I came up with this assortment of samples that I'll use to build the foundation of my beats with. The next step is to evolve and assign these sounds into a kit. I'll do things like tune the bass sounds and allocate the drum and percussion sounds to the pads for access via the sequencer. I'll also pick a few sounds from the XV5080 synth module by Roland to add some dimension and fullness to the sound, like these acoustic guitar and Rhodes patches. I'll be controlling all of this data with a Roland PC300 keyboard controller. Here's a MIDI diagram to clarify how this stuff is connected via MIDI to make it work together. But don't forget, MIDI does not communicate audio, so you'll still have to hook up your audio cables if you expect to hear anything. I'll be using the VS1880 as a monitor mixer to handle the audio inputs, and later on as a multi-track recorder. Now let's move on to our next step, sequencing and arranging. Now just for the sake of saving time, I've already completed five sequences beforehand, but you'll get to watch me do two more. This will be the first verse section of an R&B groove. Now I'll add some shakers and a hi-hat. Next, I'll add a bass line. Now I'll add some percussive effects. Now from the 5080, I'll add an acoustic guitar sound. Okay, now I'm gonna build the second verse section, starting with the drum pattern. I'll add some more guitar sounds from the 5080 here. And let's put that bass line on this sequence too. On 
the next track, I'll add more percussion sounds coming from Channel 10 on the 5080. And now a funky synthesizer sound, also coming from the 5080. Finally on the top, some bells. And in case you're wondering, I can add up to 32 different extra parts to this groove using the 5080. It's a very powerful multi-timbral synthesizer. I now have eight separate parts or sequences put together that will build the song. Next, I'm going to sync both the MPC and the VS-1880 together so that whenever I push play, record, or even stop on the VS-1880, it will control this entire setup via MIDI. Check it out. Now, this accomplishes two things. Number one, I can come back after a vocalist has recorded their part and flip a remix without having to resample the vocals by simply locking the tempo and arrangement on the MPC back to the VS-1880. And number two, if for any reason I decide to change, say, the kicks and snares, all I have to do is pick different sounds, put them into the same drum pads that the other kicks and snares were on the MPC, push play and record, and that's it. It's definitely a real time saver and it works like magic. Now I remember when we started this whole thing, how I told you I had done sequences beforehand, and then I'd do two that you could watch me do. Well, here they all are arranged in the MPC's cue list page. The parts you watched me do are labeled verse section and alternate verse. You'll definitely be able to hear them pop up as the song rolls by. All right, now we're ready to record. I'll just enable these tracks, and you're about to hear the sequences come together as a song as they're recorded to the hard disk. Check it out. the part that you watch me sequence. And here's the other sequence that you watch me do. This five-step method will work for any kind of urban music you want to produce using electronic gear. And once you have it recorded to hard disk, all you got to do is mix it right to the CD and you're done. Repeat this method 10 or 15 times and you'll have a complete demo CD ready to give to an artist, lawyer, or an A&R person to help you get your music where you want it to be. Now here's some great reading for anyone studying the science of making beats. All you need to know about the music business by Donald S. Passman is a deep look into the music biz, covering topics like choosing a manager, copyright clearance, and mechanical royalties. If you're serious about doing it professionally, you need to get this book.
Keyboard Magazine really could be called the Producer Magazine. It'll keep you on the cutting edge of music technology, give you hot tips on how to use your favorite gear or software more efficiently, and give you new perspectives through hot interviews with today's top beat crushers. They also review gear that's just making its way to the street, and you'll really know it's the bomb if it gets a key buy award. If you don't play keys but need to sample some hot chords to fit into your next groove, the Encyclopedia of Picture Chords will help you through with easy-to-follow diagrams of chord structures. If you want to take your keyboard skills a step further, check out Piano for Dummies by Blake Neely and discover your own style. All right, y'all, I sincerely enjoyed spending time with you today talking about the art of electronic music production and making beats. Until next time, this is Richard Spiderbonin signing off. Check out these titles from MVP Home Entertainment. Basics of Live Sound PA Systems, Volume 1. Basically filled with invaluable information on PA gear techniques that will help you succeed in getting a better sound. Volume 1, Getting Started. Volume 2, MIDI Made Easy. Volume 3, Sound Improvements. And Volume 4, Guide to Mixing. All part of the Basics of Home Recording series by Dave Rainman Banta. Beginning Digital, Volume 1, Intermediate Techniques, Volume 2, and Advanced Recordings, Volume 3, all part of Digital Home Recording. MVP presents the guitar method in the style of ACDC, Aerosmith, the Allman Brothers, Alternative Rock, The Beatles, Boston, Classic Rock, Eric Clapton, more Eric Clapton, Creed, The Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, the greatest guitar riffs of all time, greatest metal riffs of the 80s, Jimi Hendrix, more Jimi Hendrix, Kiss, Korn, Legends of the Blues, Limp Bizkit, Leonard Skinner, the Dave Matthews Band, Metallica, more Metallica, Modern Country, Nirvana, Ted Nugent, Pantera, Pearl Jam, Tom Petty, and many others, you will be the Shredder.